this is the Kronecker's lemma. So we have a sequence, an arbitrary sequence of real numbers. And then we have a sequence of strictly positive numbers. And this sequence is monotonic. So uh, D1 is less than or equal to D2, is less than or equal to D3, and so on. And in fact, we require that the limit as n goes to infinity of dn is infinity. Now, what is given is that we have a certain sum, which is this summation, where we have aj divided by dj. And this summation, let's assume that it is finite. Now, what we need to prove is that if we take the sum g from 1 to n aj and then divide by dn, that this quantity here will converge to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, the limit of dn as n goes to infinity is infinity. This means that by choosing small n to be large enough, this sequence can exceed any arbitrary threshold value. For every gamma that is strictly positive, there exists a v, a positive integer, such that for all small n greater than v, we have dn exceeds gamma. Okay, so this is the definition of having a sequence converging to infinity as n goes to infinity. Elements in the sequence become arbitrarily large. So given any threshold, gamma, no matter how large, we can always find an index v such that whenever small n is greater than v, dn is superior to this gamma. And this is true for any gamma, again, no matter how large. Now let's define dv. So dv will be a summation of al over dl with the summation index L, starting from V to infinity. So if V is equal to 1, D1 is basically this summation in the theorem statement. It is this summation that we know is a finite number. Now, DV is the full sum minus the sum from 1 minus the sum from 1 to v minus 1. Now this summation is a finite number and if we take the limit of both sides as v tends to infinity, this summation here will tend to this summation and so their difference will be the difference between two finite num the same finite number in the limit and so this will be zero. So because this summation is finite, the limit of dv as v goes to infinity will be zero. And the meaning of the limit, that the limit is zero, is that in magnitude, dvs for sufficiently large v, those guys can be made arbitrarily small. For every epsilon that is strictly positive, we can always find a big M such that whenever V exceeds big M, the magnitude of DV is less than this epsilon. To show that this limit is true, we will take the magnitude of the difference between this quantity, the sum g from 1 to n a g divided by dn minus 0. We will study the magnitude, and so this is a non-negative quantity. And the idea is that we will try to show that this magnitude can be made as small as we wish 
by choosing a large enough n. So the trick again is that we will show that this magnitude is upper bounded by any positive epsilon of our choice. The trick here is to make this summation look like the summation that is known to be finite, and this is given. So we will take aj, divide by dj, and have dj here. Now, what is aj over dj? Big D, okay, so what is big dj? This is aj over dj plus aj plus 1 over dj plus 1 plus aj plus 2 over dj plus 2 and so forth. What is dj plus 1? This is the summation starting from this term. And so when we subtract dj plus 1 from dj, we are left with aj over dj. Now, we will split this summation into two sums. So the first sum will be summation g from 1 to n, dj, big dj, minus the second sum, and the second sum, I will just change the name of the dummy index of summation from g to l. So it will be 1 over dn, summation, small l from 1 to n, d sub l, and then big D sub L plus one, like here. Then in order to recombine the two sums again, we will do here a change of summation index. So let L plus one be equal to J. So L is J minus one. When L is one, J is two. And when L is equal to N, J is N plus one. So when we do this change of summation index, we will get this summation here. Note that this idea, the idea here is to make the index here dj and also big dj and here big dj so that we can combine the two sums. But after doing this change, the index now is from 2 to n plus 1. So from this summation here, we will isolate the term corresponding to j equal to 1. So this is d small d1, big d1, plus the summation from 2 to n. And then from here, we will isolate the last term corresponding to n plus 1. So this will be d small d sub n, big d sub n plus 1. And then we have the other terms from 2 to n. Now these two sums, they have the same range of values for the summation index and so they can and so they can be combined big d sub j is common factor and so we get big d sub j multiplied by this dj minus dj minus 1 note that this is a non negative real number because of our requirement that the sequence d is non decreasing okay then what we will do is that we will split this summation here into two parts, okay? So uh, again, the objective is to upper bound this quantity by something that can be made arbitrarily small by epsilon. And epsilon can be any strictly positive number. So we will basically need to uh, upper bound the terms here uh, in two different ways. So we'll split this uh, into a summation from 2 to big K, and big K is something less than N. Note that N is the thing that we take to infinity. And then the other term here is from big K plus 1 to N. Now we have four terms, and we can apply the triangle inequality. The magnitude of the sum is less than or equal to the magnitude of the sums. And then the magnitude also you know, we can take it inside this summation and that summation. Okay, so now our friend is the triangle inequality. This is the first step in which we have equal. Every step uh, was, you know, just, uh, you know, manipulations, uh, exact manipulations. So we have equalities, but now by applying the triangle inequality, 
we have less than or equal to. And as I said, note that, you know, those differences here are non-negative real numbers. Uh, so, you know, if we take the absolute value, it is the number itself. So we'll have this magnitude, that magnitude, and here when uh, we take the magnitude of this guy and apply the triangle inequality so that the magnitude is moved inside, we will have the magnitude of dj, and then uh, this uh, small dj minus small dj minus one, and the same here. Now, the idea is that we have four terms, and so we will try to upper bound each term by epsilon over four, such that epsilon is any arbitrary positive number, so that the overall upper bound is epsilon. Now, here, when j, we have big D, uh, big D sub j, uh, these are basically the large values from big K plus one to N. So we want to upper bound those guys by epsilon over four. And to do this, we will choose big K to be big M epsilon over four. Let's remind ourselves what is big M. Depending on the fact that the limit of big D sub V going to zero as v tending to infinity, we know that for any positive ep epsilon, there exists an m of epsilon such that whenever the index v exceeds m of epsilon, then uh, basically the magnitude of dv is strictly less than epsilon. So we will use k, and this k is, this k is m of epsilon plus uh, over four, and note that n is something that we can make arbitrarily large. So, uh, to, you know, we will need n to be greater than k. So, you know, eventually we'll choose n to be greater than this quantity here, big M of epsilon over 4. So this is a choice for k so that here we have magnitude d of m epsilon over 4 plus 1. We have magnitude of big D uh, sub big M epsilon over four plus two and so on and so forth. And since the subscript here, since the index is greater than big M of epsilon over four, then those guys are all uh, upper bounded by epsilon over four. So we have epsilon over four. And uh, again, don't forget that this is a non-negative quantity. Once uh, we take epsilon over four outside the summation, we have a telescopic sum. And so this value here of this summation will be D sub small n minus D of big K plus one minus one. Uh, and there is a DN here. And this is a number less than one. So this term here is less than epsilon over four. So by choosing K to be this value, or even if we choose it to be greater than this value, then uh, what we succeeded in doing is to have this term uh, upper bounded by epsilon over uh, four. Uh, note that this term, uh, the index of big D is n plus one, which is greater than k, which is greater than uh, big M of epsilon over four. So this guy again in magnitude, uh, big D sub n plus one in magnitude uh, is less than epsilon over four. What about the two other terms? So we have this term here. So can we make this term here less than uh, epsilon over four? Again, uh, don't forget that we can uh, we uh, we can control n. The, the the real question is, can we choose small n that is large enough so that this quantity is made le less than epsilon over four? Yes, move this here. So we need d n to be greater than. Uh, uh, epsilon over four to be greater than four over epsilon then d d1 d1 is a known number and the magnitude of d1 is a the magnitude d1 is a known number and so yes because of this requirement note that the sequence a small d is a sequence that we require to tend to plus infinity as n goes to infinity because of this requirement we said here that basically uh, for every given threshold, the big gamma, we can always choose a small n greater than uh, a big V 
that we know is exist because this limit is this is limit statement is true for whenever big uh, sorry whenever small n exceeds v that is uh, you know chosen based on uh, our choice of the threshold gamma we will make dn exceeds gamma so if we want this term here to be less than epsilon over 4 this is equivalent to dn being greater than this quantity and we can make dn greater than this quantity because the sequence d sub n uh, tends to infinity as a small n tends to infinity by cho by choosing n to be greater than v of this number right because again here if we choose n to be greater than v of gamma we are able to make dn greater than gamma and the same can be made here so in this term uh, we will just do one uh, extra. So we have those guys inside the summation. So we can upper bound them by their maximum. And here we have a maximum of a finite number of terms because we go from 2 to k. So we can upper bound all those guys that are multiplied by those non-negative quantities by their maximum. And then we can take this maximum outside the summation. And we end up again with something that has this dn in the denominator. And like what we did for this term, we can choose an n that is large enough, specifically if it is greater than v of this quantity, we, we, we are able to make dn greater than this quantity, which will make this summation here less than epsilon over 4. So, challenge me with any strictly positive epsilon however small it is then there is big omega which of course will depend on this epsilon and big omega based on the investigation above must be greater than the maximum of m of epsilon over four remember that we need it to be like this so that we are able to upper bound those guys by epsilon over four and it must be great you know also greater than this and that so that those terms can be made less than epsilon over four by making dn large enough so for every epsilon greater than zero there exists big omega you know, chosen based on our investigation, such that for every n that is greater than big omega, we are able to make this quantity, which is uh, this quantity minus zero. We can make the magnitude of this difference, which we know is non-negative, less than any arbitrary epsilon of our choice. And this is exactly the meaning of this summation here, tending to zero as n tends to infinity.